Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiria, a teaching ministry that teaches the Word of God verse by verse to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. Today, we will continue our study through 1 Timothy. So we will cover the last chapter today, which is chapter 6. If you miss our previous studies, uh, because this is a teaching ministry, we teach the Word of God book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. So if you miss anything, you can always go to our website, kuim.org or to our SoundCloud or YouTube channel, which is Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. And all our teachings are posted online. Before we continue, let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, as always, hearts full of unspeakable joy, we have gathered to be taught by your Holy Spirit. David, speaking by your Holy Spirit, said, Open thou my eyes, that I will behold wondrous things from your word. We pray that you will teach us today by your Holy Spirit. You will give us revelation, knowledge, understanding. Give us what we need today. Jesus Christ likened a wise man to that one who hears the word of God and puts the word of God into practice. Father, we pray by your Holy Spirit that you will help us be doers of the word of God and not hear us only deceiving ourselves. Father, we pray that you will help us to understand that the love of money is a root of different kinds of evil. Help us not to chase after filthy lucas or depend upon it, but rather help us to use it as a tool to advance your own kingdom. Your goodness towards us are innumerable. Who can count them? We are very grateful. We say thank you, Father. We say all glory, honor, power, majesty, dominion belong to you forever and ever and everybody say amen blessed be the name of the lord jesus christ my good friends we will continue our study today uh we will cover uh the last chapter in first timothy chapter six and uh timothy was a paul's uh prodigy uh, his um, spiritual son, Paul started a church at Ephesus, but uh, he left Timothy there and uh, made him to be in charge as he went to Macedonia area. Uh, from Macedonia, he wrote this letter to Timothy, instructing him on how church conduct should be how things should be done in the house of God. So today we'll continue. Verse 1. Let as many bond servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. He continues his instruction. Now he's going to talk about a relationship between a slave and a master. Or we can say in the day and age we live, uh, employer and employee relationship. When Paul wrote this letter, slavery was in vogue. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, it is estimated that about... Um, 30 to 50% of the Roman population, Roman Empire, we are slaves. There are some who criticize the Bible and uh, also criticize Paul by saying that uh, the Bible advocates slavery. 
And they will say, Paul did not condemn slavery. <laughs> Understand that when Paul wrote this letter, slavery already existed. So for Paul to do anything about it would be uh, subverting the Roman Empire or instigating insurrection. And uh, he was not called to do this. Remember Paul who said that I was not called to baptize anyone but to preach the gospel. He was called to as an apostle to the Gentiles. We know that um, through his ministration, so many slave masters were converted into Christianity. What do you think happened after they were converted? I believe they set uh, their slaves free. So you see, the power in the gospel is greater than you fighting against the law of your land. Now, what is supposed to be the relationship between an employer and the employee? If you are a Christian employee, you are there to be a representative of Christ, an ambassador. There has to be something different from the way you work and the way those other uh, uh, non-believers work. They have to look at you and see something different. Now, this is the, the key. Always have it uh, in your heart that you are there to represent Christ. So you are walking as if to say you were employed by Christ and Christ is standing right in front of you watching what you're doing. If you have this consciousness, you will always represent Christ to the fullest. So you have to be there as an epistle, known and read by everybody in that place. From the way you conduct your, 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 your the, the way you work, people will be drawn to Christ. They will come to you and they will say, there is something different about you. What is that thing? And then you will have opportunity to preach Christ to them. This is supposed to be your relationship with uh, your employer. To be the light in that place. You are not uh, supposed to do anything that will uh, cause the unbelievers to drag the name of God in mud. You don't want them to say, um, if he is a Christian, then I don't want to be a Christian. No, that's not the impression you want to create there. But rather, you are there as someone who is representing Christ. In verse 2, And those who have uh, believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. Teach and exhort these things. Those who have um, um, employers who are Christians, he says, do not take advantage of that. You know, do not show up and say, uh, he's a Christian and I'm a Christian. And then you will try to go by what uh, um, Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 says. For there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond or free. There is neither male or female. For we are all one in Christ. <laughs> so you're going to bring that to him. Or perhaps you would like to preach the gospel to other people using company's time. After all, you will say, he is a Christian. No, you are not paid to preach the gospel. You are paid to do your work. So therefore, you will be diligent. Remember what Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God through him. This is the way that you're supposed to work. Whether you have a, a believing employer or unbelieving employer. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
in verse 3, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which are caused with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strive, reveling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain, from such withdraw yourself. Here, Paul tells Timothy to distance himself from false teachers. Those who would teach doctrines that would not point people to godliness, which means being more like God. Those who would teach human doctrines and uh, traditions and uh, rituals, the things that will make the word of God of no effect. These are the people who are very controversial, very, very quarrelsome. You know, they will argue scriptures with you. They will take a test out of a contest. Then they will make it a pretest just to be dangerous with it. And in doing so, uh, they will uh, cause strife and division in the church. The reason why they're doing this is because they are prideful and they are ignorant. These are the people who believe that uh, godliness is a means of acquiring wealth or a means of, uh, of, uh, of uh, 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 being rich. So under the platform of Christianity, they will steal from you. They will rip you off. You know, they will use like some spiritual uh, 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 jargons like uh, 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 God bless you. Uh, uh, praise the Lord, brother, hallelujah. And while they are saying that, they are stealing from you, they are cheating you, they are ripping you off. So these are the people that think uh, if you're a Christian, then God says that you must be rich. So they will use any means. Even inside the church, they will try to lobby for contracts. Knowing fully that uh, the aim or their purpose is to rip the church up. So he tells Timothy, he says, distance yourself from these such individuals. We are now in verse 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with this we shall be content. Here he gives us the true meaning of godliness. Remember, godliness is the process of being more like God through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. So he says, uh, uh, the way to godliness is to be content with what you have. To be able to say that I have what I need. Thank you, Lord. Instead of having a vehement desire to acquire and acquire and acquire. But friends, remember that contentment is not easy. <laughs> It's not something that you can achieve on your own. In the world we live today, we have so many commercials, television commercials, radio commercials, social media commercials. The purpose of them bombarding you with all these commercials is to have you to feel like something is missing from you. They want you to think that you are not uh, beautiful or handsome, that you could look much better. They want you to feel like uh, 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 you, you, you need something. 
And because of this continuous bombardment, they have uh, engaged people in this consciousness of acquiring wealth, acquiring this, acquiring that. Even though you have this uh, iPhone um, 14, <laughs> <laughs> but now the iPhone 15 is out, so you want to rush for it. They, they, they put that, they, they make it feel like uh, the iPhone 14 is, the, is now a, a trash. So you need iPhone 15. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So this is their manner. So it is not uh, easy for you to achieve contentment. It depending on your self-effort or on your power. Rather, there is a way out, my friends. <laughs> that way is dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Remember, Jesus uh, promised to send us another one just like him. It's Alos Parakletos. That's the word in Greek. Another one just like him. Now, the word Parakletos, the Greek word, is so rich that we, we have to uh, uh, find so many English words to qualify it. So we, we get words like um, uh, an advocate, a, a counselor, a helper, a standby, one who, was, uh, who, who fights together with us against the forces of darkness. You see, that's the word parakletos. So by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the grace, of the Spirit of God in us, we can walk in that contentment. Contentment is something that we have to learn. Remember Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 verse 11, that I have learned in whatever state I am, they are to be content. It's something you learn. It will not come by itself. Are you hearing me, my good friends? <laughs> you gotta depend in the power of the Holy Ghost and you gotta yield yourself so that you can walk in contentment. Regardless of how rich you were or how much you gather, when you die, <laughs> you're gonna take nothing with you. They, maybe they will bury you with a good casket and they'll put gold uh, uh, rings in all your fingers. <laughs> but do you know the one that is lying in that place in the grave will not be able to use any of those things. This is why Job said that I, I came out of my mother's womb naked, which means I came out with nothing. And he said, when I depart, I'm going to go the same way that I came. I'm not going to take anything with me. Learn how to say to yourself, Father, I will seek first your own kingdom and your own righteousness. And I trust you that you will supply everything that I need. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me um, read something to you. In, um, in a Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. You don't have to turn there. I already pre it here. So uh, I'll read it to you. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. What is he saying here? He says, God, don't give me so much that I will depart from you. That I will be puffed up with arrogance and pride. And he says, don't give me too little. Then I will depart from you chasing after filthy lookers. He says, what I want, O oh Lord, is that food that is allotted to me. That's what I want. That which is for me. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse um, 9, actually we are now in verse um, 11, I believe. Oh no, verse 9. <laughs> I don't want to rush anything today, even though we have only one hour uh, to finish the whole chapter, but I think we'll be all right. So in verse 9, it says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, 
For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Hmm. It says here, for those who have set a goal, I must be rich. <laughs> Once in a while you hear people say that, I'm going to make it by all means necessary. That I, I must be rich. Those who have made the money their God. He says, in the process of achieving their goal, they fall into destruction. They fall into problems. They fall into temptations. And even some of them have died in the process of uh, trying to fulfill their goals. Some of them have involved themselves into uh, demoniacal activities. There are some who have sold their souls to the devil just because they want to be rich. Some have killed other people in the process. Some have stolen and cheated other people in the process. And at the end, do you know what happens? They are left in loneliness. Because now, a lot of people don't want to do anything with, with them because of the mannerisms. And some of them are miserable and they are left in regrets. You know, they, they look back and, and, and then they regret whatever they did in the past because they knew they've come to the place of understanding that they should not have gone that way. For that is a way that seems right unto a man. But the ends thereof are ways of destruction. So the question is this. Does it worth it? Going through this ordeal just to reach your goal. <laughs> just to impress other people and say, I have arrived. Do you know who I am? <laughs> just to say, when I show up. That would be respect for me. So he gets into uh, one of the most misquoted scriptures in the Bible. You heard people say uh, uh, the love of money is the root of evil. <laughs> That's not what that scripture says. It says the love of money is a root. Of different kinds of evil. So money, like other people will, will, will misquote. They will say, money is the root of evil. No, not at all. Money in and it of, of itself is, uh, is neutral. Quit means it can be used for good or it can be used for evil. With money, you can advance the kingdom of God. I mean, you can turn many to righteousness with money. You can spread the gospel to the untold. And with money, you can build nuclear weapons with the intention to destroy other nations. Money is an amplifier. It amplifies what is already in your heart. So if someone has a heart of evil in them, money is going to bring it out to the full. And if they have a very good heart in them, it's going to bring it out. It's going to show it out. Because of a uh, uh, love of money, we have so many evil in the world today. For example, you see the proliferation of pornography, the spread of pornography everywhere. Very easy to assess. Now, who put all these things out there? Somebody did because of money. They want to get rich. So they're not thinking about the destruction that whatever they are putting there is doing to people to families, to young teenagers. Because of love of money, we have drug addiction. We have so many drug addicts. 
Now, who puts the drug out there on the street? Somebody, somebody does. Now, the one doing this may not be using those drugs, but they are aware of the evil behind it, the destruction to people's life. But they don't care because love of money. They continue to even uh, 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 produce new ones every day just to make money. Because of love of money, we have nations deteriorating every day. Now, we see somebody because they want to be a president. And they know they don't qualify for that office. But they're going to use their money. They're going to buy their way with money. They will buy the judiciary system with their money. And the rightful person who won the election cannot do anything. Because they don't have the money to pursue it. And even if they go to the only place that they can go, the, the, the court. The court is already bought with money. So now justice will not prevail. Even if though they, they call, they know the truth. They're going to turn it upside down. And now when this person gets into office, what do you think they're going to do? The love of money. They're going to enrich their pockets. There will be corruption everywhere. The masses will be the ones suffering for this. Two maladministration, they're going to deteriorate the country. A country that's supposed to be going forward, now is going backwards. The evil behind the love of money. That's what I'm saying. Remember that uh, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Everything you have, everything that you will have, will someday pass away. They are not sufficient. Only God is supposed to be the one sufficient in your life. God has placed eternity in our hearts. What does that mean? It means that uh, He he wants us to focus on that which is eternal. Not the things that are perishable. The things that after 20 years or 30 years, you won't even know what happened to them. Let me ask you a question. Have you seen a 17th century millionaire walking around this earth? Have you seen any of them lately? I have not. <laughs> they have been they're gone a long time ago. <laughs> and so, you and I, will go someday. So seek first the kingdom of God and his own righteousness and every other thing will be added unto you. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 11, but you, O men of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Instead of chasing after the unrighteous mammon. Even instead of chasing after ungodliness, futile lookers, perishable things, things that when you turn around, they are gone, blown away with the wind. He says, instead of doing that, I want you to focus on godliness. I want you to focus on being more like God. By the power of the Holy Spirit of God. He says, I want you to focus on a, on a, 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 a faith. Now, the faith here means faithfulness. Being able to be trusted. Instead of being known for that one who embezzles government money and the public funds. Be the one that can be trusted. It talks about love here. Have love for one another. 
If we will walk in love, we will not have any intention to steal from other people. We will not have any intention to steal government funds. And also he talks about patience, tolerance, endurance, being the same, trusting God in all, the, all every situation, and gentleness. And we achieve this through the power of the Holy Spirit that I say. Because by the Spirit of God, you will be mold into the image of Christ day by day. It is a process. After you get born again, that process begins. You are changed every day into the image of Christ. From glory to glory. Even by the Spirit of God, through the Word of God. Remember what Paul said. He says, put on the new man, which after God is recreated in righteousness and true holiness. That's what he wants us to focus on. Godliness. <laughs> Godliness. Very, very important. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. To which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Here, Paul uses a, a military metaphor. He says, fight the good fight of faith. A very popular scripture. So many people know about this scripture. You see, the Christian life that we live is a battle. It is a battle. We go through trials and, uh, and the tribulations. Through persecution. The day that you defected, <laughs> the day that you left the camp of darkness and you were catapulted into light where Jesus Christ is the king, that was the day that you made yourself an enemy of Satan and his demons by association with Christ. For the Bible says uh, 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 that we have an adversary, the devil. He says he walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And we are every day in a spiritual warfare. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. The battle is real. But do you know the good news? <laughs> the good news is that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ put Satan where he belongs. <laughs> and now, in his name, he gave us the authority. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We are not uh, uh, ignorant of his devices. This is why the Bible says, give no place to him. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Because now he's given you authority and power. To the enablement of the Holy Spirit, we become more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Remember, Jesus Christ said, in the world, you're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. This is true. When we depend on the power of the Holy Spirit, we will always be successful in this world. For the rest is not to the swift, neither is the battle to the strong. You know, it's God who is always at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. This is why we can always stand bold and say, I can do all things to Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. Because it is not by our own power or mind. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. 
He says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. How do you lay hold of eternal life? By your faith. You don't give up. You don't slack. You see, you yield yourself to the prompting and the leading of the Holy Spirit. You are led by the Spirit of God. In Olympics, in the 100 meters race, I don't know so many people competing for it. And everyone is shooting for the gold medal. But only one person will get the gold medal. So he says, fight like that one who's going after the gold medal. For he that was does not entangle himself with the face of this world. That he will please that one who has called him to be a soldier. So he wants us to lay aside every weight and uh, the sin that do easily beset us. And run our race with uh, patience, looking up to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our own lives, of our faith. So this is how we do it. We don't give up. We don't chicken out. We don't cry and we don't whine. Even in the midst of our tribulations and our trials, we say, Thank, thanks be to God, who will always give us victory through Christ Jesus. For Paul says that uh, 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 tribulations will always produce uh, patience or endurance. And endurance will always produce character and character hope. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what we are called to do. You cannot halfway give up. No, have that consciousness in you. We have been called to fight the good fight of faith. We don't give up. We are now in verse um, 13. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things. And before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate. That you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. Paul says, in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who made the good confession before Pontius Pilate. <laughs> when Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He says, for this cause, <laughs> I was born. For this cause. I came into the world. <laughs> he says, continue. Continue to live with this consciousness until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, you know, he's talking about the rapture here. The day when Jesus Christ is going to come and take his church, you and I, <laughs> out of this place. <laughs> For the Bible says the Lord shall descend with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. And he says, the dead in Christ shall be raised, and we who are alive and still remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord forever and ever. He's going to come. It's, it's coming. Remember, this is one of the blessed hopes of the church. This is the next event that we are waiting for. And every day when I wake up, I'm so excited because it could be the day <laughs> that we're going to take that uh, one-way flight to heaven. <laughs> Think about it sometimes and then you're not going to be troubled with anything going on in this world anymore because the tribulation will kick in after that. And you're not going to be here to face the tribulation. <laughs> you're going to be in heaven. <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are in, um, in verse um, 15. Which he will manifest in his own time. He who is blessed and only portented. The king of kings and the lords of lords. Who alone has immortality dwelling in unapproachable light? 
whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. <laughs> so this is a pickup from where we stop in uh, the last verse. Now, we have a, a one-way flight <laughs> to heaven during the rapture. Now, when we get to heaven, oh, we're going to say, wow, <laughs> I have heard of heaven by the hearing of the ears. <laughs> I have read about heaven in the scriptures, but now my eyes have seen heaven. Oh, <laughs> it's so beautiful. And while you are still saying these things, Jesus will say, oh, 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 wait a minute. Come now. Let me show you the Father and his glory. <laughs> You know, Jesus Christ is the express image of God. Could it means he came from heaven to show us what God is like. To give us the character of God. Something that we can be able to stand with our physical uh, nature. That's what Jesus Christ brought to us. For he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But now he's going to introduce us to the spiritual glory of God. <laughs> oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to say, come, let me show you the Father and his glory. And the Bible tells us the characteristics of God here. He's going to introduce us to the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The one who is immortal. And he dwells in a light no one can approach. <laughs> so now, this is the reason why it's wrong for you to have an altar in your room where you have images representing God or Jesus Christ. First of all, the Bible tells us the second commandment is against that. You don't make any images. To represent God or beings in heaven. Now tell me about the image you got in your room or anywhere in the house or in your car. Can any of them represent what we just read here now? Can you capture any of these things in a canvas? Tell me, how can you capture immortality in a canvas? <laughs> how can you capture the one who dwells in unapproachable light in a canvas. King of kings and lord of lords. How can you capture that in a canvas? That's why when you have those images mean that you have fallen from the reality of God. Now you're trying to make an imagination. You have fallen from that relationship, that connection, the spiritual connection. So now you want to have a, a physical image to restore your, phys your, your lost spiritual connection. No, it doesn't work that way. What about those ones, other religions? Can they speak of these things about their own gods? <laughs> In Habakkuk, the Bible says, Woe to that one who says to a wood, Awake! Go to an idle stone, be alive! <laughs> can they do can they do they have any of these qualities here blessed be the name of the lord jesus christ this is why we must study the word of god this is why we must know the scriptures because things like this are mind-blowing when you can read the qualities of God, you will be like, wow, we haven't even seen anything yet. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we're in verse 17. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. <laughs> When some people read this section here, they have this uh, concept that is talking to uh, millionaires and uh, billionaires. But no, it could be talking to you. If you have a roof over your head and you can afford uh, three square meals a day or even have a car to go from point A to point B, 
You are much better than so many people on the earth. So he's talking about you. <laughs> so he says, do not put your trust in your riches. The Bible says, if riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Remember that uh, 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 you, you've had the phrase, money talks. <laughs> Indeed, money talks. But sometimes the only thing he says is, bye. <laughs> it, has, it has wings and they will fly away. It was, and they would tell you, bye. <laughs> so he says, do not put your trust in them. Rather, he says, put your trust in God who is able to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. He says, the God who gives you the power to get wealth. Who delights in the prosperity of his children. He says, this is the God that I want you to put your trust in him. Now, there are other things that we should enjoy. Not only wealth. Have you thought about nature? <laughs> Have you thought about the stars? Have you thought about uh, the, the sunset? And the sunrise, the ocean view. Sometimes relax and watch, just watch. Enjoy this nature. You know, God reveals himself in nature. Even to that one who says there is no God. When they look at nature, I don't know why they can't see God there. Because the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For the invisible thing of him from creation are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even the eternal head, eternal power, and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. When we look at nature, we see God. It is one of the proofs that is God. <laughs> So you enjoy the things which God has made available to you and I to enjoy. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are now in verse um, 18. Let them do good that they be rich in good works. Ready to give, willing to share. Storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. That they may lay hold on eternal life. Here now he tells you what to do with the riches which God has given to you. He says they're supposed to be used uh, uh, for good works. For the advancement of the kingdom of God. The Bible says, let him that stole, steal no more. Rather let him walk, let him labor. Walking with his hands, what is good. That he may have something to give to that one who is in need. This is the purpose of being wealthy. To help those who are in need. To advance the kingdom of God. Remember the uh, uh, contrasting parable that Jesus Christ gave about the unjust word. The unjust word that uh, wasted his master's goods. And it was brought to his master's attention what he was doing. And the master called him and said, Give me an account, for you will cease to be a steward. And the Bible tells us that quickly he went to those who owed his master and said, How much do you owe my master? And that one will say, So, so, so amount of wheat. He will say, Erase it. Now put this amount. And he will go to the other one. How much do you owe my master? And he will say, so so amount of oil. And he will say, erase. Put, an, put this number there. And the reason why he did that was to secure his future because he, he understood that he doesn't have the physical energy to work. Or maybe he's lazy to do any man or labor. Jesus commended this unjust word. That's where so many people have so many troubles. They say, why would Jesus Christ command an unjust word? 
But Jesus tells us why. He says, because the children of this generation are wiser than the children of light. Then he gives us that good advice. He says, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon. So that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting home. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there is going to be a day when you're going to stand in the judgment seat of Christ. When he's going to give out his uh, rewards for the things that are done in the flesh. Remember Jesus Christ said that uh, uh, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth. We are rust and moth, destroy and thieves break in and they can steal. He says, rather, lay up for yourself treasure in heaven where neither of these things can have access to. It is a wise thing for us to know that everything we have here will pass away. For the one who is not saved, it will end here, right here. As a matter of fact, this is the closest they're going to get to heaven. But for you who is saved, that is eternity. So he wants you to use this uh, 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 filthy mammon, this unrighteous mammon, to lay hold of eternity, to get yourself a reward that is coming. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are now in verse um, 20. Oh, Timothy, God, what was committed to your trust, Avoiding the profane and idle blabbings and contradictions of what is first called knowledge. By professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. <laughs> In his closing uh, um, exhortation to Timothy, he tells him, to God, that which is committed unto his hands. Do not let them slip away. He tells Timothy to avoid the, the, the Gnostics. Now, the Gnostics are those who practice Gnosticism. In the belief, in their belief, the, 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 the thing that a material world is evil. Like you know the name Gnosis, which is the Greek word for knowledge. So the thing that uh, you have access to God through what you know, through knowledge. So they claim some kind of secret uh, knowledge. For them, they believe that a certain emanation went out from God that created this physical world. That Jesus Christ could not have come in the flesh because that would have made him evil. Rather, Jesus was like a phantom. When he walked on the, on, the, on the ground, he did not leave any footprint. This is what they believed. They did not believe in the incarnation and the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time when Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, they were everywhere. So Paul tells Timothy, stay away from them. Now, in the day and in the time we live, this, we could compare this with uh, 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 evolution theory. <laughs> you know, those who believe in that theory. Instead of facts. Because evolution is just a theory. <laughs> Which means it can change any time. <laughs> you know, when we were growing up, they told us we have so many, so many uh, uh, planets. And then all of a sudden, they will change the story and say, now we have this uh, number of planets. One of them died. <laughs> These things are theory. <laughs> they are not facts. Because facts will never change. <laughs> so he says, do not pay attention to these guys. Going around with theories that do not have any biblical premise. Rather, he says, God, the truth that you know. Where do we find the truth, my good friends? It is found in the word of God. This is why we put the word of God in our nose. This is why we study it. This is why we know it. So that when we find out what is in there, we're going to guard it. 
so it doesn't slip away from us. So that when these uh, heretics, teaching heresies, when they come around, we're going to know, uh, 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 that's not what the word of God says. And we'll be able to fish them out. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My good friends, I believe we covered everything today. So I have come to the end of today's program. If you're hearing my voice and you are not yet born again, or maybe one time you confessed Jesus Christ, but you wandered away from him. Today is another opportunity for you to make that connection, to come back or to be born again. The time is too short. Do not procrastinate and say, I will do it later. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed to you and I. Just today, about 155,000 people died in the world. Some of them maybe were procrastinating. The Bible says the day you hear his voice, that day, that day, do not harden your heart. Therefore, make that decision the day you hear his voice. There is a reason why you are hearing this voice today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Jesus Christ is the only way that you can have access to heaven. There is no other alternative. He said it himself. In John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And in Acts of the Apostle, Peter said, there is no other name under heaven. Given among men whereby we must be saved. The name is the name of Jesus Christ. You see, to be born again means that uh, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Not just uh, uh, confessing Jesus and walking away. You start a relationship with him. This is why we have so many church members who are not born again. Because they're depending on their self-efforts. On their good behavior to have access to God the Father. If you belong to other religions, maybe you heard that all roads lead to heaven. But that, that's not true. The Bible tells us that he that acknowledges the Son, which is Jesus Christ, also will have the Father, God. But those who reject Jesus, it means that they also rejected the Father. Both go together. The thing is this, you are the one who's going to make this decision. No one can do it for you. Because you and I, we are created as free mortal agents. Which means we have the right to make choices in life. And God will not interfere with that. Jesus said that if you don't believe that I am the Messiah, he, you will die in your sins. He don't want to die in your sin. You see, it is not the will of God that anyone should perish. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. So that when you believe and you receive him as your Lord and your Savior, you will be recreated. Your destination, your eternal destination will shift from hell to heaven. Think about the future. For this world is very short. In a twinkle of an eye, it will all go away. But why is your spirit going to spend eternity? Have you thought about that, my good friends? This is why it's good to secure your eternity now that you are alive. Because when you die, it becomes too late. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you call upon his name today, <laughs> you will be saved. Because Jesus Christ will by no wise cast you out. 
He will receive you graciously. And when he receives you, he will change you from inside outside. That's how he does. He doesn't catch his fish and leave them like that. But whenever he catches fish, he will clean them up. I'm going to lead you in a very short prayer. <clears throat> if you pray this prayer with all your heart, you will be born again now. And if you will die, you will go straight to heaven. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe he is your son. He died for my sin. You raised him up from the dead on the third day. Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. By faith, I believe that I'm now born again. My sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. My name is now written in the Lamb's book of life. Father God, I give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you say that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. Please look for a good church where they teach the word of God. Be a member of that church so that you can be taught the word of God. The only way you can grow spiritually is through the word of God. Buy a Bible and uh, depend on the Holy Spirit to give you revelation, knowledge, and understanding of the word of God. Friends, I want to use this opportunity to thank all our, all our partners all over the world. Those that are helping us reach other people with the word of God at no cost to them. Those that are praying for this ministry, supporting us financially. And those that are rendering their services in one way or the other. I say thank you so much. For God will never forget your labor of love. If you want to be a partner, please go to our website, kuim.org. Remember, it is only those who hear the word of God. They are the ones that will get the benefits of the word of God. Those who hear the word of God and put the word of God in practice. We call them the doers of the word of God. I urge you this day to be a doer, not a hearer only. My friends, I pray for you this day. May the Lord bless you and be with you always. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, sound mind, even in the midst of trouble. May he give you that strength, the strength and the ability to be always that one that he has called you to be. May he give you divine health. May he supply your needs according to his riches in glory. May he give you the wisdom to make the right choices in life. And bless the rest of your week. And everybody said, Amen. My friends, regardless of what you see or what you hear, <laughs> do not be troubled by them. Remember that everything passes away except God. And if you trust in him, your expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Baruch Hashem, Hadonai. Onakis komando, kubashe, rakala la prados, te kana angala pate. Vusete bene unko so parade, ikara aska la patot. Mele gang glandam skulo pra glandam shalakuto, bulo et ne fratusto kupalia ne masala patont. Ben and Gunjem, Gunjem, Kunjem, Kanjem, Kunjem, Kuntem Pate, Palagasta, Elekele Pratont, Diesco, Uko Voje, Kalamas Kunte, Barabati Brakon. Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiri, a teaching ministry that teaches the Word of God verse by verse to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.